This is Pastor Josh Van Engen of Christ Community Church in Sheboygan. Pastor Josh, thanks for your time. Yeah, no problem. Thanks what are you, for having me. What are you working on these days? Uh, we're still going through the book of John, so, um, and we're in the middle of Lent, of course, so, well, not the middle, but the very beginning of Lent, mm-hmm. and we're going to be walking through how John portrays, you know, the these final days and the passion narrative, so that's where we're going through Lent and Easter. And that's so. with the lectionary, as I always like to point out. When I'm yeah, I use I use the narrative lectionary. Mm-hmm. So that's how that's where the narrative lectionary goes this year. We normally normally we might have used a series, but since uh, this year I'll I'll be taking a vacation week, kind of toward the right before Palm Sunday, so in a couple weeks. So we just decided to follow the lectionary. It's just a lot easier. So you're in the you're in the passion narrative already. Uh, so this week we'll be doing doing Jesus washing the disciples' feet. And okay. then, yeah, we're going to start right in there. So he's in Just Bethany take already, small yeah. sections of it. Yeah. So we're actually not that far away, Zach. I know. It comes way too fast. I got a lot of things to prepare for I know. the services still. Don't remind I me. Know. Well, I probably need a reminder. All right. <laughs> so so you got Jesus watching, washing his disciples' disciples' feet this week? Yep. From the Gospel of John. Have you had a chance to dig into that passage yet early in the no, week? No, just a little bit. Just a little bit this morning. Mm-hmm. So... Any um, any early thoughts, opening thoughts that you had on? Yeah, well, so it's it's interesting. Um, it's interesting how how it all works, right? Like um, how Peter is um, won't doesn't want Jesus to wash his feet, right? And it's uh, he sees Jesus as the king, and uh, in his humility, doesn't want Jesus to allow him to wash his own feet, and how um, just drawing some connections and how we may do the same thing sometimes, how we might see Jesus as, as not a servant, um, but as only a King, right? So, and how does that all work? Um, Are we able to allow Jesus to die for us on the cross or do you even accept that forgiveness if we can't see Jesus that way? Do you, do you encounter situations where people express that, you know, and and maybe not, so obvious of terms, but where they might hint at that Jesus can't die for their sins. I mean, have you had situations like that? Well, I think, uh, and I've I've had discussions with people who, you know, think that, for example, that they have to, in order to even, I had a conversation not that long ago, actually, with somebody who was concerned about taking the Lord's Supper, even joining the church, Mm. Until they knew that they were right with God mm. first, right, and so they had to they had to make all the preparations themselves. They had to really be able, in order to come to the church and be a member or to accept the grace of God. They almost felt like they needed to actually do the work themselves, right. And so it's it's a difficult thing, um, I think, to accept that Jesus died for our sins. Mm. I want to um, flip the scenario a little bit. So we've both seen situations where people struggle to see Jesus as a servant. Have you had scenarios where people struggle to see Jesus as a king? Mm, oh, of course. I think that oftentimes in culture, especially in our culture today, we struggle to see, we struggle to recognize who it is that we even come to worship, right? Mm. Um, sometimes I bring this up with just the way that we dress, but I don't want to get all legalistic. But I think that there is something to, would you come to church and i know that it's not all about all about this legalism and i want to try and be very careful here but the king of the universe is who you're coming to worship Mm. the king of all creation the one who died for you on the cross is is here he's the one that we're worshiping the one that we're singing to the one that we're gathered together to be in prayer to and it is interesting the um incredibly comfortable way that we come to worship sometimes, even in the way that we dress. Um, We probably wouldn't dress the way that we do if we were to go to, for example, if we were to visit the president of the United States, would you come in a hoodie and torn jeans? Oftentimes we live our lives the way that we want to live and just Mm -hmm. expect that Jesus will somehow forgive us or, 
you know, because he has to forgive us, he died for us on the cross. Right. And so he doesn't really care. Right. He's a cosmic butler, right? He just, way. he serves me and he fixes my problems. And in that way he's right. useful. Yeah. Right. 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 So why? Yeah. yeah. Certainly we struggle both ways, I think. Mm -hmm. Why is it important to get both of those things right? Why do you need both and not just mm. one? Because it's who God is, mm -hmm. right? He's both a servant and he's a king. And, uh, we ought to try our very best um, to know who we're worshiping, mm -hmm. to know the one that we're worshiping. That's important. Yeah. And uh, not not only because we're we're trying to worship God as who He reveals Himself to be. We want to worship God as He as He shows Himself for, for who He is, but also because we're called to emulate the one who saved us, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, we ought to be able to it, it's tough to reflect christ if we don't really know who christ is mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so it's good to to get those right and uh it takes a lot of wisdom it takes a lot of prayer it takes a lot of reading in scripture to to know who god really is um, mm -hmm. but yeah that's why we're that's why we should always be in scripture and always be in prayer and those types of things right so Josh, how can we be praying for you or for Christ Community Church? Hmm. Well, um, we just, uh, right now we're still looking for a guy to, to replace Aaron Bach, as you probably know. So uh, be in prayer for that. We think that we may have a, a worship guy, but we're still looking for a director of family and youth. So mm -hmm. be in prayer for that. We we thought we we had some people um, that would have been really great for our church and didn't didn't work out and that's that's okay that's uh, we're okay with that but now we just need to get back to the drawing board and yeah. so we just pray for God's wisdom and God's leading there and that He is uh, working patience in our hearts and uh, also getting the the new person um, already um, getting his his heart um, ready to worship here and uh, so you can pray for that and. We just uh, um, pray for uh, for our church that, that uh, we can always be following Christ and that we, too, can always be in Scripture and, and our people, too, excited for, for ministry mm -hmm. in this place. And uh, um, personally, for our family, we're, as we talked about just before you started rolling, we're moving to a new house in Sheboygan. And so uh, um, we pray that that goes well for us and... Uh, um, I always tell people now, I don't have the keys in my hand yet, so I'm a little bit hesitant to even talk about it a lot of times. But um, when I get the keys in my hand, then it'll be for real. But we're we're hoping to move here in a couple of weeks to the south side of town, closer to school. So we just pray that that all works out well. And, and those are some good things, of course. We always pray that our church is uh, following God and, and just um, following his leadership and his mm -hmm. wisdom. So mm -hmm. that's those are ways to pray. Yeah, excellent. So. Well, thanks for your time today, Pastor Josh. Yeah, no Appreciate problem. You. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, talk to you later.